how does that compare to your evaluations in your civil services? The people who've come on the course obviously have an interest in reforming or improving their own civil service or their own system of, of governance. So those are the things that they're particularly interested in and they're looking for ideas to take back and asking lots of questions, detailed questions, about how we do things here. It's not just a series of dry facts. It's not some kind of project management plan that you're trying to put into place. It's, it's a way of thinking and then of acting. That's what we're trying to get across. If anyone watching this thinks about what they've learned in the past about the EU, you could probably read on the back of a cereal box. And yet, these are people who are negotiating on behalf of the United Kingdom in Brussels. Really, we're trying to give them some idea of how Brussels operates. People do not become sensitized to a kind of what we call esprit communautaire, a real community spirit, if they just kind of stick to their dossier. The whole point is you have to make networking alliances with others, you have to know a little bit about how to speak to others, and that's what we try to, to, to show as well. I really wanted to see how your training is going here and how it's uh, delivered because as an institute for civil servants, for training for civil servants, we are interested in other, other institutes and how do you do your work so we can learn something from you. We had these counter-terrorism experts from Austria and Germany. We had a Slovenian very interested in EU policy making and expert on that. I mean, wide range. And so what we do is we tell them about the British system, especially about EU policy making in the UK, but also we arrange a visit so that they can meet someone doing roughly what they do in the UK. The best experience I had was the visit at the Parliament, because in other um, context I couldn't have gone to a House of Commons meeting. It's very difficult, I understood. Many of these European partners uh, of ours are, are much more used to a, a lecture format. I never use PowerPoint. I, I look at people eye to eye and engage them and think about how to reach their minds because people have to be interested and for that you need a bit of curiosity. So the first thing is to create that proper learning environment and that actually achieved a great deal of success. The second thing is then, then to convey a certain amount of information but in a light way, again very participatory, very interactive and to encourage their questions. Also to show that there's never one right answer. You have to encourage this notion of debate and we're certainly not trying to say the British system is the best by any means within the EU. It's so that we can learn from each other. I talk about how the treaties have emerged, but not because of the treaties themselves, but just because of the wish to go from a Europe of the 1950s after World War II to a more contemporary Europe and what the steps have been, where the UK fitted in or where it didn't. And people suddenly start to see some of the rationale, the, the reasons for why the European Union has progressed as it has. If you want to get an understanding of how the UK government and the civil service operate and also get access that you wouldn't get normally, the meetings we set up with, with the policy people in the departments, it would be very difficult to do that by yourself. So, you know, come and do this and, you know, it will get sorted for you. We do have an exercise on the future where um, I've developed these kind of make-believe countries and they have to think about which EU powers this country would like to have. They think about what it would be like to influence the Commission, the Parliament, the Council. They all come expecting the worst possible, most boring day and it turns out against their expectations to be very exciting. So we normally encourage them to do that and a second one-day course which is more about the institutions. That's where influencing comes in, in terms of how to operate in Brussels. And so again, people just expect a series of kind of dry facts, and that's not the way we engage them. And they tell us they feel much more confident in dealing with EU institutions. The civil service, actually, I realize that is not very different from ours. It's, of course, when you work in the civil service, you get a lower salary than in private sector. You, But you have to do it with your heart open and because you believe in it. I'm a fan of England, so I, I will come probably every time I have the occasion. <laughs> the environment is perfect for people to go and learn and relax and think all, only about uh, that courses and that training. It's a good opportunity and uh, for me, for example, it made clear what uh, UK civil service means and what are your relations with the European Commission and what are your relation with the other member states of the European Union, I'd say it's perfect.